Hey guys, how's it going? I'll give you an update on the Buckin 371 build. This is a 76 cc's big bore kit, highway type nickel. Let me show you some tips for building these. First, I want to explain, okay? Now, see this JB weld? This is the JB weld you want to use. Stuff that takes like 24 hours. Now, what I did is I filled the cases in this. And I matched it. And the reason why, I'm on, I understand why, because when you use this type of piston, this is obviously the 268 piston. That's the 272 piston in there. See how the windows are in there? You actually lose case compression. Okay. Let's see, this is the. It's the 272 or the 372 piston. You see the difference? Okay, see how this one? You'll have a little more case compression with this piston. This is the 372 piston, 50 millimeter. This is the 268 piston. See the difference? Now I understand why Iron Horse did that on his 371 build, the Buckin 371. It's to try to increase case compression. Okay. That's one of the things I was lacking whenever I did the, when I had this this cylinder on here. It didn't have quite enough case compression. And it's like when I filled them, I could tell just by pulling it over. It perfect. I'm not talking about compression, I'm talking about case compression. Because you gotta have that so it'll uh, you know push the fuel up and through your transfers. Obviously it gets sucked in through the piston, but and there's a the huge difference. And like I said, gonna use the JB weld. Gonna need JB weld. The intake as well. Okay. Which isn't that hard. What you do is you get make sure you don't wash this with, with anything. Grind fresh material out with the grinding bit, make sure it's pretty rough. Use one of them tile cutting bits. Let me show you. Oh yeah, this, this is what I use now. These are real good, these uh, grinding bits. This top Dremel tile cutting bit. Rough set up real rough. Just want to go in there. Make sure I get the right cylinder here, okay. Just want to, wherever you're putting that epoxy, you want to rough that up with this. Don't wash it with nothing. Just rough it up and the same thing with them cases. Make sure you clean all the paint off with this and it'll stick, definitely. There's that. Rough it up, let it sit for a day and it should be ready to, ready to grind. Okay, there's that. Okay. Now, something else I want to show you. Now, being you're using this 268 piston, or in this case, this is the 272 piston. As you can see, okay, that the skirt's shorter on the 268 and 272. So, problem you're going to have is you're not going to have the right intake volume. It's not going to pull the right amount of air and fuel into the cylinder. So something I figured out by just looking at cylinders. This is 372. See how the, see up there? That's the stock piston. This is 660. Starting to notice a pattern. Take roof. I'm gonna say I might be doing a pop of Smurf bill to do some machine work on the cylinder because the squish is horrible. I might get a lot of exhaust timing out of that, make a torquey saw. That's a future project. Okay, let's drop this down in here. See that? See how short that is? Now there's a blue mark I put in there. See that blue mark? 
you want to grind not to the piston side, but the, the intake side, like you're viewing it here. You want to grind right there. That should give you the right amount of intake volume when you fill your cases or you fill your uh, intake with epoxy. Okay? You don't want to be too much. I got this one set at about 155 total opening, which is 77 and a half degrees after top dead center. Did that. Uh, so there, there, there's that to look for when you're building these. Just just check any cylinder. Just drop that piston down in there and just, just study where the, where the piston goes and you'll learn where the intake roof is. I did that on quite a few cylinders. Something I figured out on my own. Now a real critical thing you want to do. Now I put blue marker on this for a reason. Now I did this in a video because I machined that piston that Harbor Freight Mini lathe I got. Reason why I did that is because when you machine them pop-ups you want to make sure that down inside the cylinder here you don't hit you don't hit against that combustion chamber. Okay. I'm going to take that. I'm going to turn it like this so you know where you're hitting. Like this. Okay. Now on this piston, I know I'm hitting right here on the squish band area. You don't want to hit right around that pop-up. You don't want to hit there. I got that one set at about 20 thousandths. This is uh, one of the cut off pieces of solder I used when I was checking my squish. Okay. If it's going to zoom in there. See that? Okay. Now, when you check this solder, okay, obviously you check your squish. I do it here okay. Check it like this. Okay. It's showing about 20. With the uh, moto seal, I got about 22. Seems to be about two, one to two thousandths, I noticed with that moto seal. And, and in the pop up, you want to measure close there right inside that pop-up I can show you. see I'm measuring right here where the uh, the pop-up is about 18 so with the moto seal I got 20 so when this is sitting in the saw right here this inner ring is twenty thousandths around that cylinder. Took me a while. I keep messing with it to get it, get it to uh, do that. But ultimately, I did that because I wanted to have the right compression and everything. Obviously, this is machine perfect, and it might take you a couple tries. Just just keep checking it. Keep sneaking up on it. You'll get it. Okay, there's that in the break-in on this saw. What, it, like I said, breaking in this saw was a little bit tricky because it seems as though the piston on a 268 and 272, the tolerance is just a little tight. Okay? What I recommend when you're doing saws for best results, so your piston rings seat in, um, Everything seats in beautiful, seats in easy. This is for 52 and 54 millimeter. Is that part number there? It's flex home. All you do, you just run that in the cylinders, go like this, slow, and then reverse it one, two, just do like one, two, three, four, then do it in forward, one, two, three, four, that, that's it. That's all you do. You're not really taking material, you're just roughing it up. Now the problem I had with this, and the same thing with this, this 268 piston, is 
I fired it up and I got a little bit of scoring on the uh, intake side. So I pulled it apart, re deburred everything, chamfered this piston even more. Then I ran this in there again. And I ran this another tank idling. Now it seems beautiful. Beautiful. It's seating in beautiful. The rings seem to be seating in. This is only about maybe a tank of fuel through this thing. Mainly idling. I cut a wee little bit of wood. I'll tell you what, man. This thing seems like I didn't even hit the trigger. Just enough to keep the chain spinning. It's just like I didn't even have it in the wood. <laughs> this thing's pretty close to the iron horse build that he did on his channel. The intake, like I said, I got it set at 155, which is 77 and a half degrees. The exhaust, I wanted to have a little torquier saw, so I got 103 degrees after top dead center. My blow down's about 26 on this saw. So, seems to be a strong, strong runner. I got to get up my camp, and uh, that's that's where I cut wood around here. I don't have much wood to cut. Weather's just been too horrible since October to get up there. Just like Iron Horse says, you can't. I can't cut a lick of wood. The weather's too bad. Another few weeks, I'll get up there. We'll cut some wood and fire up the 660 and. Uh, I'm going to show you a future build. This is my buddy's. Yeah, he blew her up. O28 wood boss. I'll do a tear down on this. I'll show you some things about cleaning the cylinder. I don't think you can save this cylinder though. Scored the piston all up pretty good. Uh, let's see. This here. This is the 041 I got it running idled beautiful but the thing that was was the diaphragm and a carburetor I gotta get a diaphragm pressure checked it compression checked it everything's perfect perfect just needs a diaphragm because idle it there it'll it'll idle all day until you put it in the wood it just just dies out set the carburetors did everything it's let me show you the diaphragm. Now if you can see that. Probably pick it. Like when this thing had fuel in it, it was like this. So it was it's like crooked like that. It's like when it dries out it gets a little better, but when you get fuel on it, it goes like this and then it won't pull fuel. It shuts the metering lever off so okay guys till next time keep on feeling the heat